Hi folks, Tim Newman with Soft Light Studios, and it's another, well I was going to say beautiful Saturday, but it's another Saturday in Columbus, Ohio. We have severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings, tropical depression warnings, and now I'm just offering a depression warning. Okay, kidding. We're still bringing videos to you, even though the water's rising out back here. Today, it's time for another Adobe Lightroom Classic CC Quick Tip. If you are a newer Lightroom user, or heck, even an experienced Lightroom user, and you have found yourself baffled by the number of options that come up in the dialog box when you choose to edit an image in Photoshop, then you're not alone. It happens to a lot of Lightroom users. So today, in this quick tip, we are going to explain the choices that are in those dialog boxes and when you see them and when you won't. Let's take a look at Lightroom. In this Lightroom catalog, we have an image here that we are ready to take over and edit in Photoshop. But before we edit this image in Photoshop, what I want to draw your attention to is right down here in the status bar. And that is the name of this file with a .arw extension attached to it. Let's come back out of Lightroom for a minute and discuss this. I don't know why I keep calling it Lightroom. It's Lightroom. There's no F in there anywhere, except for financial obligation in renting the software, but that's a whole nother topic. Okay, so the fact that this is a RAW file, this ARW extension tells us that it's from a Sony camera, but it could just as easily be a CR2 file from a Canon camera or an NEF file from a Nikon camera. Those are all RAW file formats from those cameras. And one thing that we need to know about RAW files is that we cannot save our edits into those files. Lightroom, of course, will save edits that you perform on a RAW file as editing instructions in the catalog. That's what Lightroom is designed to do. And well, heck, that's part of its whole non-destructive editing process. But when we take this image out of Lightroom and we're going to edit it in Photoshop, what we have to know is that we are getting back a new file format from Photoshop. It might be a TIFF, it might be a PSD, and that result is all a matter of what choices that you make in Lightroom's preferences dialog box. More about that in a separate video. But just remember that anytime you edit a raw file in Photoshop, you have to come back out as either that TIFF or that PSD file type in Lightroom. All right, let's jump back into Lightroom and take a look at this a little further, okay? So if I would like to edit this picture in Photoshop, I can simply click on this picture and go down and do it edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. And in a couple of seconds, Photoshop will load. And in a couple of seconds past that, we'll see our image pop up on the screen, ready for us to do something to it. Now, one of the things that I always do when an image pops up on the screen on my Mac, I do a Command-0. That's a Control-0 on Windows. And that makes that picture fit the screen as large as it possibly can without clipping anything while still respecting aspect ratio. I love that shortcut. So what I want to do here to this image is something that's an obvious edit so that when we come back out of here and we take this result back to Lightroom, we can spot it immediately. Didn't say it was going to be a good edit, said it was going to be one that we noticed right away. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add in an adjustment layer and we're going to add in the hue saturation adjustment layer. And the hue saturation adjustment layer allows us to grab this targeted adjustment tool right here, come over here and pick a color. And while I'm holding down, I can drag to the right or the left and saturate or desaturate that color. Here, we're just going to go to a ridiculous extreme. I would never recommend doing this edit, but I can tell you looking at this right now, you can clearly tell when you look at this picture that we made this edit to it and you'll be able to see it in Lightroom when we get back over here. One more thing I wanna point out here before we leave here. We have a new layer here. And this new layer is something that we wanna keep an eye on as we go through the remainder of this quick tip. So I'm gonna do a Command W on the Mac. That's a Control W on Windows. And I'm gonna save 
this file. Now, whether you know it or not, Command or Control W is the shortcut in Photoshop that says close down a document that you're currently working on. And if that document hasn't been saved, it's going to ask you, would you like to save this? And it went ahead and did that. And now if we do a Command tab on the Mac or a Control tab on Windows, we can hop back over here into Lightroom. And boy, you can see my wonderful edit right here. It's now added to the film strip as an additional image in this film strip. And you can see that it's added here as image number two. And if I work my way over here to image number one, there's our original that we started with. The fact that this has a two on it indicates that it's number two in this stack of photos. So one of the things that Lightroom will do for us is stack edited images together as long as it's the same starting point for the image. And that again is another setting that you make in Lightroom preferences. By default, images are automatically stacked together if this was the raw that helped create this image. So you know that they all belong together as a set. So we can see here real quickly, if we look down here at the bottom of the screen, that it says that it's the same file name, but it's got a dash edit dot PSD. That's telling us it's been edited once and it came back as a PSD file or a Photoshop document type. Okay, and if we go over here to the right one with our cursor key in the film strip, we can see here that there's our original file name .arw. That's that raw file that we started off with. All right, now I want to show you something. I am going to add in a Lightroom adjustment on top of this Photoshop image that we just brought back. And that adjustment I'm going to do is going to be a crop. So I'm going to hit the R key to bring up the crop tool. I'm going to crop the image down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off all of those red pillars, or these happen to be perfume cases, red perfume cases over there on the left. And so as I'm looking at the image, we just now see a column of orange all the way over to a column of blue. And that red column that was on the left is no longer in the image. That's important to remember because we're going to want to observe some things here as we move forward. So now I've decided I would like to edit this image again in Photoshop. So I'm going to do my right click and I'm going to do edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019 and all of a sudden the playground rules have changed. Before we didn't get this dialog box when we were getting to edit this raw file it just said okay go ahead load it up into Photoshop. Now we've got a different set of circumstances that Lightroom is dealing with. Lightroom is seeing a PSD file here and it knows that that's not a raw file anymore. So it knows that it can save changes back into that file. And it gives us two options here. One is to either edit a copy of this file so it will take this PSD file and create a new one for us and allow us to edit there or edit the original and it will just take this file that we're currently pointing to and open it up in Photoshop. Now the choice at the top is where things become just a little bit complicated. We added a Lightroom edit on top of this Photoshop file. And Lightroom's fine with that. Lightroom says, oh, okay, Lightroom edit. I will store that edit with this file as an editing instruction in the catalog. But here's where the rub comes in. If I say edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, then I am going to lose layers, adjustment layers, and alpha channels in my Photoshop or TIFF file. If I say edit a copy or edit original, then I will lose my Lightroom adjustment that I just did, but I will still have my layers, my adjustment layers, and my alpha channels intact. So let's say edit a copy just to track through this. Okay? And you can see immediately it made a copy for us. It loaded Photoshop back up, and here's my image again. And I'll do that Command-0 on the Mac, Control-0 on Windows for you Windows users to make it full size. And you can see, looking over here, yep, there's my hue saturation adjustment layer. Now, just to make this completely identifiable when we come back out of here, I'm going to add another adjustment layer, and I am going to do hue saturation again. And rather than using the targeted adjustment slider this time, I'm going to just say, take the saturation out of every color. Look at that. I've created a real quick 
grayscale or black and white, if you will, here. By the way, not the way to create a black and white. Good for this example, but not great for editing black and white images. So there we go. We have another adjustment layer. If I just double click here on the properties panel and the history panel to shrink them down, now you can see all my layers here. And you can see, in fact, I do have my original background layer that has the image in it. I've got that first hue saturation adjustment that I made the first time we came into Photoshop. And now I have the second one that I put on here where I went ahead and made this entire image desaturated. Okay, a Command W or a Control W again, and let's save this file. In a second, we're gonna end up back in Lightroom, okay? And when we come back in Lightroom, we should now see three files stacked together. And we're gonna just do our Command tab or our Control tab to get back over into Lightroom. And sure enough, here we have it. We have one of three, two of three, and three of three. There's our raw file. There's our first edit with our Lightroom crop on it. And now we're gonna go one to the left. And when you first saw it, it came in as a color image. It took it a second to recognize that update. A little bit of a lag sometimes there in the preview redraw. But there you see our new black and white edit of this image. And as you recall, <laughs> when we went into Photoshop with that image, we saw all those layers intact. Now, let's go back over here to this second copy that we made here. This is our first edit coming out of Photoshop. And we're going to do an edit in Photoshop one more time. And this time, when this comes up, rather than selecting a copy or an original, those bottom two choices, we're going to say, hey, give us a copy that has the Lightroom adjustments merged into it. All right, here we go. Back over into Photoshop. Our image is opening up and immediately you should notice two things. One is that red column on the left is gone. It kept that Lightroom crop intact and brought it into Photoshop for us. But as we said, you'll notice that our two adjustment layers over here any other layers that we might have had, and potentially if we had any alpha channels back in here, which we do not, they would all be gone. Basically, when we take an image out of Lightroom and we say, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments in it, you get a flattened image opened up into Photoshop. So if you have ever been in a case where you've been surprised by that, now you know why that's happened. I'm gonna go ahead and do that Command or Control W here, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this out of here, and we're gonna end up back in Lightroom here using the Command tab or the Control tab shortcut. And here you can see, now we've got four copies of this image. And one of them has that dash two in it. So this is a second edit, but it's got edit, edit, dash two. And this is a second edit, but it's got edit, edit, and no dash two. So that's Lightroom's mechanism for keeping those all separated from one another. You can see that this indeed has a four on it. So this would be image number three, and number two, and number one in the stack. And so it's keeping these all together for us. All right, let's hop back out of Lightroom here for a second. And I'll talk with you about a couple of things here in our wrap up. It's really important to understand those options and where they direct you when you take images out of Lightroom into Photoshop. If you need to preserve your layers, adjustment layers, and alpha channels in your workflow, let's say you're not finished with an image yet, you're halfway through editing, you've got more you want to do, make sure that you don't layer Lightroom adjustments on top of that that you stick with that edit a copy or edit original choice so that you get all of those corresponding layers intact in your file. In fact, from a workflow perspective, from my point of view, I basically divide editing up into the following steps. I crop first, I white balance second, I do my global adjustments in the basic control panel in Lightroom. When I am done with those three steps, and note that one and two are both optional, I don't need to crop and I don't need to do white balancing adjustment. Those are optional steps. But once I'm done with those three steps, I'm ready to go to Photoshop. And when I go to Photoshop, 
I'm no longer doing any edits back in Lightroom. That's the cutoff point for me. Photoshop is my local editing tool, and then I layer on top of that at the end any sharpening and denoise steps that I need Photoshop to do for me. Once I bring that Photoshop back in, document back out of Photoshop into Lightroom, I am not layering any more Lightroom adjustments on top of that. I don't want to diverge my workflow in that way. Now, it's not that you can't, and it's not that it's a problem. It just helps me to keep that straight. Okay, hopefully, now that you've seen that, that will clear up for you when you should use certain options there in Lightroom and what to expect when you see that PSD or TIFF file open back up in Photoshop subsequent times that you're in editing it. Appreciate you tuning in today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there wherever it lives below the video. And keep following us here at Softlight Studios. We've got more videos coming at you soon. Remember, as we always say, learning equals skills, practice equals mastery. We'll see you out there. Thank you.